I awoke to a dark and somber morning. This unusually dark morning was my first in Fakarava Atoll. The atoll is based in the Tuamotos group. I was dreaming of turquoise waters, coral reefs and sunshine, sandy beaches. This is not quite what I expected to see when I slid the uh, hatchback. And together with some wind, it didn't make for a very pleasant morning. My friends on the boat Iris had arrived before me, so were there to welcome me when I arrived at Fakarava. But this morning, well, I thought I'd hang back a little bit, have a cup of coffee before venturing out. Nice to come ashore in a place like this where you can dispose of your rubbish properly. Went to the tourist office, I heard you could get internet there and that was true. It was quite slow as it always is in these places and you had to sit outside in the rain. Lots to look at, bits of wood and this sign which reminded people who lived there where they lived. Found the local post office which was closed, had a big dish though. But I decided to go and look at some jungly bits in the jungle. I have a lot of interest in history and graveyards can be a great source of information like this one on Fakarava Atoll. When you think the atoll is nothing but a rock in the middle of the Pacific and these people lived here for hundreds of years, family upon family. It's all fascinating stuff. Hard life. Just how people manage to eke out a living to sustain themselves on this coral reef is amazing. There's very, very little topsoil here, so you're limited to what you can grow. It's bad enough now with queues uh, once a week to get the only vegetables that come into the island at the local shop. Think what, what it must have been like back in the day. You can see the ground here. It really is a coral island. You can't grow anything on this sort of stuff. It must have been really, really tough. <coughs> I found this little pathway that took me off the beach and up onto some scrubland. After a little walk through the jungly stuff, came across a compound with a tent and a few cabanas. Turned out to be private land and the owner and his dog came up and promptly threw me off. I didn't get a chance to test this hammock or sit in this cool chair, so I just went off and hung out with these boys. Some of the foliage on the island is just amazing, like this fellow here. Here's a really cool tree. Uh, in fact, there's so much stuff on the uh, Fakarava that was cool. This clearing was cool. This garbage can is the coolest garbage can I've ever seen. How's that for cool? Then I saw this. Was this cool? I think it was probably some kind of monument. Uh, there was a nameplate on there, but I couldn't see any name. Probably some long dead, long forgotten uh, politician. But with the trees blowing in the wind behind it, it looked pretty damn cool to me. Made my way back to the boat on the coast and the sun had finally broken through. But I decided enough was enough, a good day, back on the dinghy and home for a cup of tea. supply ship leaving they, they came I don't know what supplies they bought but we went to the shop straight away and there was still nothing in there so uh, hmm no fresh vegetables today just doing the washing up and every time I threw some dirty water over the side I'd have some visitors these fellows live on the bottom of the boat or have been doing stuck to the keel they got a sucker on the head that makes them look like they got a radiator grill there Good job they're not sharks. The weather was good for a while, but then it went from that to this, literally within minutes. Rain and squalls. Notice I've got a Tiny Shaddy actually on the deck and tied down. Otherwise, she just likes playing it being a kite. There's a ship coming into the anchorage. As long as they stay well away from me, that's fine. I believe it's a supply ship with fresh vegetables on board. With the weather outside being absolutely atrocious, 
and the boat Iris getting a right good bashing there. That sounds a bit rude, doesn't it? Uh, it's time to come below and do some work in the dry. You may remember this. It's my old anchor stroke deck light made out of a jam jar, which I did uh, some time ago. Uh, decided it had finally had its day, had been leaking and stopped working. Decided to go plastic in an update here. Plastic jar with a stern light, which I bought and never used. I'm going to fit that inside. To go through the lid, I've got this little joint here uh, with the cable running through. Put some, I think it's called TFT tape on it uh, around the thread uh, to stop any leaks. Yes! I'm a genius. The next morning there was a bit of wind around, but nevertheless, clear skies and no rain. So decided to do some work on deck. I still had uh, Tiny Shaddy tied on there because as I said before, she does like to fly and pretend that she's a kite, so she's better off like that. Taking a look at the non-working depth sounder unit, moisture in it, it's the second one that's happened to. That's a brand new unit from just uh, last year. Oh well, nothing to be done there. Also looking at this, got a cover over the hole that is, uh, was the window in my bimini, got to get that fixed. I'm working out how I'm going to install an aerial tuner there under the arch. But all work and no play makes for a boring sea dog. So decided to get out again and do a little bit more exploring of the atoll. I was hoping with this beautiful sunset that we got at the end of the day, that's usually when they occur by the way, <laughs> that we were going to have a good day the following day, but that wasn't to be the case. So what I thought I'd do uh, is show you how I did a bit of filming. In my Crossing the Pacific uh, series, uh, the five episodes that covered that, there was a bit of filming I did off the boat and people were saying, I can't believe you jumped in the middle of the Pacific. Well, I didn't. What I did was take a boogie board, a GoPro camera strapped to that, and I actually used fishing lines so you couldn't see it in the uh, eventual footage. But it does show the conditions as they actually are at sea level much more clearly than if I was filming it from the deck. This is the next day things have calmed down a little bit. Tiny shaddy's full of lovely fresh water, so we like to save that, especially when we haven't a source of water nearby, which we didn't do there. Uh, just from the sky, filling this up, and this is my cruiser's washing machine. Nice fresh water from the sky into dinghy, into washing machine. There you go. And people think I don't get enough exercise living on a boat. You uh, try picking up that much water and walking across a rolling deck in a wind. I'll keep you fit. Next day, however, things were beginning to look a little bit better and brighter. Woohoo! A stiff breeze and Shaddy's on her way. Got baby Shaddy up on the side because it's only a fairly short hop today and I knew the sails would be out on the other side.
yet of another beautiful sunset. And after a good day sailing, get the sail down, the anchor down, and a cold beer down. A serene scene, if I can say so. A beautiful vista, a nice, peaceful anchorage. How wonderful. A great day sailing, a great day in all. Halfway down the inside of the atoll of Fakarava, time to stop for the night. thought I'd give you guys a bit of a head up on uh, where we are. If you look at the chart here, uh, this is South America where my finger is and where my other finger is, that's Australia and New Zealand. And right there are the French Polynesian Islands where we are. At the moment we're on this one, Fakarava. The whole thing is about 30 miles long by, I don't know, I think 7 miles wide. Uh, and it's a fringing reef. That's the reef all the way around here. This is the windward side, and you can see um, by the density of the charts on here that uh, that's where most people live. Um, and in the middle, it's uh, water, but it's not all clear water. It's full of bommies uh, or coral heads just splattered everywhere. They're everywhere. So you can't go in that area. If I move over to the side a little bit, uh, you can see this passage. We were up in the north area and uh, we're working our way down to the south, but we're doing it via a side channel. On the east side of the uh, atoll, you can see there, there's uh, boys marking the way. And uh, that's pretty much where we are at the moment down here. As time is getting on, I think what I might do is make my way down to the south pass here this is a part that I want to see because uh, there's some world famous diving uh, with sharks uh, in this passage, so uh, that's what we want to do. Squall just came in. It's not often that I get to see an outside version of what's actually happening to me and Shaddy. Uh, this video was taken from my friends on Iris who were a couple of hundred yards, a few hundred meters from me. I was sort of anchored out in the outside part of the bay and was getting the worst of the weather. But I was hunkered down, I was safe, but you can kind of see just how miserable it is. And it was kind of miserable. Ridiculous this weather. See that's easy Mike behind me. You see the squall over there? It's just blanked out everything. So yeah, yesterday I started the engine or tried to and it didn't start. So I took that apart and fixed it. And then I tried to leave and my anchor was stuck in the uh, in the rocks, so I had to dive on that. Well it's okay, these things happen. Uh, <laughs> But not the engine thing, this is a saga that's just going on. Uh, left, uh, chased after my friends. Um, and I made it all the way down to the anchorage, which is, which is here. Uh, I haven't been able to get ashore. None of us have been ashore uh, today, anyway. It's just, if you could see a bounce here, well, I could see. There are mooring boys here. I didn't get one, but um, I was going to move to one this morning. Tried to start the engine, the engine wouldn't start. So, um, I got all the, I just set to it. Eventually I got it started. Mike came over and gave me a hand to turn the engine over while I bled it. This again is footage taken from across the bay by my friends on Iris. You can see Mike coming across to help me. <laughs> I gave him a call, said I needed his help to turn over the engine. I didn't expect him to come across while the squall was still going, but bless him, he did. Nice man, thanks Mike. I needed your help and you were there for me. I mean, yesterday's perfect. I got in at five o'clock. Absolutely perfect. Dropped the hook and uh, had a beer. Talking of which, oh, I made some bread today, by the way. That was good. <laughs> That's about the only successful thing. Mighty, I got the engine started. Yeah, 
diesel tasting beer, wonderful. Beer o'clock, beer o'clock, ooh, beer a beer o'clock. Beer o'clock, beer o'clock, ooh, beer a beer o'clock. Beer o'clock, beer o'clock, ooh, beer a beer o'clock. Beer o'clock, beer o'clock, ooh, beer a beer o'clock. Beer o'clock, beer o'clock. Um, if you look at the charts up here, that's a... Oh dear, somebody on the radio now, thank you. Learn to use the radio, get off calling channel. The thing is, time is running short. Uh, the season is drawing to a close. No, it's not drawing to a close. I have to be in New Zealand by the beginning of November. And remember, that trip alone is a thousand miles just to there. I'm going to cover a couple more thousands in just trips around here.